Texas in the house. Right. <laughs> Texas stand up. All right. Can How y'all you... doing? Yes, sis. Good, good to see you. Good to see you. All right, sis. The floor is yours, you know, sis. So take it away. Take it away. Yes. Yes. First of all, thank you. Hello. How is everyone doing this evening? I know it's been a lot. <laughs> I am the goddess Neith. I am from, like the brother said, Texas, which is located in the United States. So I hope I'm not too Southern. I hope I'm not too country for y'all. But <laughs> in the midst of all of that, I have a platform named The Blackest Truth, where I take the system of racism, white supremacy, break it down and make it easier for us to maneuver through and extremely passionate about Pan-Africanism. So uh, some things that I've been thinking and thinking and ruminating on over the past weeks um, is how to make Pan-Africanism more tangible, how to make it every single day. Um, what are some things that we could do to always and in, in make it inclusive and encourage it within our lifestyles? Obviously, we already got it as far as yourself, brother, all of the panelists and a lot of those who are in our circles. Um, I think when studying white supremacy, what I see though, is they're always big on recruiting. White supremacy is big on recruiting, recruits, recruits. We need more people, it's never enough foot soldiers. Um, and I think that um, looking at Marcus Garvey, just looking at all of our previous Pan-Africanists and just what we've done, that's always just been a big thing. So uh, where I'm at, not only just with the platform, but just as a person is how to make this more tangible. Uh, I was watching We Are The World, a song, which was a classic back in like the late eighties, um, which kind of like had all of the, the name brands, Michael Jackson, um, it, Marvin Gaye, it just had a, a, a lot of people. And I just thought to myself, man, what if we did kind of like a Pan-African spin on that, where you got your Afrobeats artists, where your grime artists, where your black American artists, your South African artists, and that's just the like the ultimate theme and takeaway. Like we are one, we're working together. I thought it would be pretty dope. Um, and I don't know, like, uh, I don't know how to touch these people, obviously not yet, <laughs> but this is just something that uh, I thought about incorporating. What do y'all think? Is is that ever something? That sounds good. That's, make it happen by any means necessary. Make it happen, sis. You like that idea? I'm here for that. I'm here. What do you have for that? <laughs> I think it'd be really dope. We have some really, really crazy artists. Yeah. So also um, something that is just happening out here in America, you know, it's always kind of like a pressure, uh, a angst. It's always an angst and pressure due to the climate of white supremacy. Obviously we know it's a global system. We know it's everywhere. Um, but something that I was thinking and really wanting to encourage Black Americans is really to explore the, I, the idea of living outside of the continent, or excuse me, outside of the country on the continent. Quiet is kept. You got a lot of us that really just don't want to leave, even amongst all of the chaos and amongst all of the nonsense. It just has to, it has to become like a total all around hell for many Black Americans to want to be able to leave the plush life, quote unquote. Um, so always looking for uh, ways to strengthen and bridge the relationships and to also get continental Africans and di Africans of diaspora to see that uh, our relationship does extend more than a political. I'm definitely for taking a girl's trip. <laughs> I'm definitely for like having rites of passage um, doing movies together, you know, everything doesn't have to be like um, cookie cutter or anything like that or, along those lines. And I'm, I'm just really passionate about that and think that that's something that our, our, our people need. Um, and thank y'all. If you don't mind me, Shakara, reading some of these comments, do you? No, sis, like, this is your show, you know, so if you want them to unmute, talk to you, interact, you know what I'm saying? Throw your hands in the air and wave like just don't care. Is this it's your show, sis? So yeah, take it away. Take it away. Take it away. Okay, I just want to make sure. So <laughs> someone said that's a good move, even with some traditional languages, dialects like pigeon. Yes. Um, Emin Udutong, I think it would be even better if we created our own language. Like if we took it a step further, I have many friends who are on the continent and they they mention having degrees in this and degrees in that, but no no viable income coming in. And it's just a lot of people 
thousands of people that add up to millions who have nothing to do, nothing productive rather, but great minds. I always think to myself, man, if I could just take a hundred people, put a hundred people on language tasks right there, y'all just sit over here and y'all don't do nothing but create languages. A hundred people right here, just ultimate organization. So we definitely could learn pigeon. We could definitely learn patois. Um, you have, you know, Africans in South America, they speak uh, Portuguese, they speak Spanish. It's a lot of language. You got the Garifunas that have a little mixture of their own. If we could come up like with a pan-Africanist language, obviously we got to keep it a code and secret. That would be really awesome. Um, yes, divesting from America and also the, all the Euro, Euro countries are key. Um, Hakeem Belogan, but how do you do that and make it popular? Like, you know, essentially divesting from America and European countries we know is, is what we should be doing, but how, how can you do that when um, a lot of the countries that we do business with, or even America, some, some countries in the UK, some countries within Canada, uh, excuse me, within South America, places like Canada, when you look at the resources they have and how their businesses run more fluid, um, even just a simple transaction, like a, imagine like a PayPal or just doing your monetary transactions. I don't know where, what y'all have in the UK, but just think about a platform that you could take it from beginning to end with just a smooth, smooth setting, no hiccups, the website don't go down. You know, I know <laughs> I'm not trying to step on nobody's toes to be be disrespectful, but these are real things that we deal with as issues with our websites or our, our sub, some things. So um, recently I was on a phone call with someone. Um, it was a group of us that were talking about building and starting a penny fund and uh, the Melanated Agenda, the Melanated Agenda, which was an event yesterday in, in uh, America we basically discuss gentrification and essentially it's just the movement of black people left and right every 20 to 30 years. It doesn't stop, it's always been happening. It happened on a continental aspect, um, but how do you stop gentrification if it's reoccurring? And we discussed coming up with uh, something viable that we put our money together every month and essentially every year and put all of that together, but it can't die. Um, and I'm not sure where y'all are at, or I'm not sure how you all feel, but one of the, my frustrations as a Pan-African is as someone who really does want to destroy the system of white supremacy, who, who tired of just always talking about it and being a part of this group and this season, it was this and this generation. For someone who's there, I always think to myself, where is the end point? Where is the, the new place going to come in, into play? You get what I'm saying? Like, what changes if if white supremacy is constant and it's every single day what are we globally as, as the african people doing so get this y'all i think what would be really really cool is something like uh like a, a black flicks like you know how you got netflix and everyone pays like 10 11 15 dollars a month well you create kind of like a app, even like a cash app, PayPal. Like I said, I'm not sure where you are. You just just take out the PayPal and put whatever works for you. And it and it essentially works as an app that debits out a certain small fee from the person who signs up for it. And I think something like this, these are the tangible things, something that we could do. Um, this could take a um a think tank of about five to six people that are just totally committed and it could it could happen anywhere not even just in america in a texas in a uk this could happen anywhere in every single country even in every village so something like that where we would have those resources to pull from um i bet you please y'all forgive me if i'm i'm screwing up these names blame it on my head and not my heart okay i bet you chinagua says, yes, sis, keep talking truth. Everything is needed and necessary to build and develop nationhood. Uh, diaspora, send, diaspora sends more money to Nigeria than all other foreign investment aid or loans everywhere. Ethiopians funded the GERD, uh, DAM with diaspora money and with money from people on the ground. That dam will produce enough power to power East Africa. So are you saying that to say that Nigeria is, is the is the gold mine is to, to look for 
um, because I see your last name is Belogan. And so I'm thinking that you might be Nigerian yourself and feel as if that 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 would be a good direction to take. Let me know, Hakeem. Black Flex could work. We already have Senia Black-owned equivalent to Instagram. Yeah, so imagine, and then we have a, a Black-owned, we have a BB2Me on YouTube. We have a Black, I believe it's um, Black account on Facebook. There's a Black a black Facebook. Imagine if you organize all of this, your Cine, your Black YouTubes, because there's probably more than one, your Black Facebooks, and then you get it as advertisement. So just like Coca-Cola or Pepsi or whatever the product, the candy, the fruit that advertises in your area, we advertise this Blacks Flix, but that money, that income is something that I think, and it's just making it more, more tangible. And again, um, this is something like a recurring every 20, 30 years. This is a conversation that I can read history books and read about how they said the very same things, more powerful in some, in some cases. So it's more for me um, and the legacy that I wanna create is how to put it on the ground. We got the map, how to put it on the ground and keep it living. So we're, you know, sometimes I'm not sure if you all have seen the PK or PK is the, is the acronym for a pastor's kid you'll see like the pastor will be on fire, woman or man be in ministry or something like that. And then the child totally goes astray and it's the total prodigal of whatever that parent was. How to keep uh, something like a God Kush and a Yemaya and a The Blackest Truth, how to keep those things living, viable, breathing in another 20 years. These are still assets. These are still platforms. That's where I'm always at. Um, Hakeem Belogan, you said, yes, Nigeria can do for diaspora business, but I was trying to say our money as a race is greater than any investment or age coming from America, Europe, and or China. I agree, definitely. Um, and I, I see that Nigeria is just one of those places, even musically, you have a lot of artists from all around the country. Um, I'm a South African music fan just because I liken that music a lot to Black American music whenever I hear the artists. Um, when you look at a lot of Afro beats, when you look at a lot of the music, when you look at a lot of the industries coming out of Nigeria, it seems that, that that's kind of like a very warm spot. So imagine you had like a prominent Pan-African is coming right out of West Africa right now, like a prime, prime, prominent um, Pan-Africanist who could then get with uh, Davido or Burna Boy or kind of like just put together a, a, an event that made it really, really popular, that really created the idea that we are one. It's not saying, obviously, that we have an issue with anyone else, just because I typically say on my platform that that's not who we are as Black people. However, we've gotten a, we've gotten a code, we have an allegiance. So Yemaya Sankofa says, me too, me, South, Af South African house bangs. Yeah, I don't know what they be doing with their music. That South African music be hidden. South African music completely different to Afrobeats. I don't know what they be putting in, in that music, but um, one of my friends sent me a South African uh, song and I was just like, wait a minute, who is this? <laughs> so again, imagine if we all had like a dope song and everybody was doing like they dancing and eating their food and you know dressing according or like the video shoot could just switch from scene to scene. Look, I'm just... I'm just too, too excited to hear that. Uh, Berna is definitely on a wave of one Africa, originally called Kwaito music. The new genre is Apa Piano. Okay, awesome. Um, 280 said, you look stoning, sister. Thank you. I don't know what that word means. Let me know. Give me the 411. What does that mean? You look stoning. Is that like a inside term? No, it's, no, it's just a typo. It means stunning. You know what I'm saying? You know, translation, you know, translation, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> The, yeah. the language barrier, the language barrier, you know. Right, right. I'm trying to keep an open mind here. So my, that might have been a word that I didn't know. <laughs> you got it, you got it, sis. I'm in the safe side. <laughs> oh, embarrassing. 
Thank you, though. Thank you. I appreciate that compliment. <laughs> but um, yeah, I'm not going to lie to you. I want to hear hear about, I know you said Chakra is my show, but I, I, I actually want to talk to y'all. How is it out there right now? Um, and what do we have to do to get something like this together? Like the influences that we might have, how can we put the music together? Yeah, you know, it's this is a question that I've asked myself many, many times here. Yeah. And by the way, this is an open conversation at this point <laughs> until until our next speaker is ready. So if anybody wants to say something, just just raise your hand in the chat and we'll bring you through. Because uh, the goddess Neef is an interactive. <laughs> she likes, I am. She likes, the, she likes the interactive ones. But f- f- I, I do want to say though, first and foremost, do subscribe to the Blackest Truth. Yeah, you must do that. Subscribe to the Blackest Truth. Um, and we'll make that. You know what I'm saying? And make sure. And I, and I, I'm, I'm going to start it there in the sense of the fact that because we were we were very blessed on this the other day, and we know we ain't we ain't had a substantive conversation with you yet. We'll get there. But when you reached out to us on a networking team the other day, do you know what I'm saying? I, f- I feel like um, that's really going to be the start of it. You know what it is? In in, in London, UK, we've got like a, a strong um, African diaspora community. Yeah. So Africans from the continent and Africans from the Caribbean are here right now. And it's, it's an interesting thing that so the, the music of the black diaspora, there's an audience for it in just London just the city of London, wherever you come from in the black diaspora, almost, yeah? There is an audience for you here. So that a lot of artists, um, South African, Kweto house artists tra- um, tour here, yeah? Um, West African Afrobeat artists tour here, Congolese Central African artists tour here, reggae mm-hmm. artists tour here, soca artists tour here, R&B hip hop artists tour here, they all tour here, right? But we don't control the industry. We're not the, the promoters of the tours, you know what I'm saying? And, they, and them kind of things there. They, they, they are responding to the demands. The fact that, because the fact that they're getting the streams from here, they're yeah, getting yeah. The, the listens from here, you're getting the shout outs and the follows from this country, looking at the demographics and they're like, yep, we have an audience, we can make money in, 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 in London. And yeah. so they come. They come, but, but we, don't, we, don't, we don't control the infrastructure. So mm. I think that a lot of it is going to start with the networks that we're building up acro- across these social media and this, these mm. YouTube. And because there's, there's a lot of connections right going on right about now. A lot of these people that are doing, um, that are going to the continent and 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 um do- documenting their experiences. We're gonna have to link up and put some capital behind certain things and make it an international kind of connection whereby it's backed internationally and we're controlling that process. I think it's just it's just going through the steps, seeing the vision, but going through the steps. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And not mm-hmm. let this step, like the fact that we're at this step disheartened us because we ain't got to that that big vision yet, if that makes sense. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So yeah, that, that's my, my little contribution there. One second, I got my son on the rampage. Hold on. <laughs> Couldn't decide to come join the conversation. I love that. Bro. I love that the son is in, in the video as well. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, you know? See, that's, that's my question. I'm oh, sorry, we, we got um um Farthing Neverfield who wants to um I feel like that's that's just that's just your address, bro. I want to get your name. But um, go go ahead, my brother. Speak. Yeah, my name is um Stephen Chibo. Stephen, we we we'll, we'll go with Chibo. I like I like Chibo. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, Chibo. I was telling uh, my sis the other time that she looks stunning. Doesn't mean and it just mean beautiful. So yes, uh, that yes. was just what it meant. Um, well, re- re- as in kind of uh, reacting to what you said. Um, at the moment, uh, with respect to uh, you know organizing big events. Uh, to what you're saying, I, f- I feel that a lot of uh, the youths, um, like the organization which I represent, uh, which is the African Caribbean Pacific, where we're also trying to, um, you know, organize this, I mean, trying to bring up this particular organization, we're thinking of, it's not just having Africans there, there are also some of our brothers and sisters who are not basically uh, having kind of African, uh, uh, I like to say nationality, but really they're Africans. So we kind of are there, the Caribbean and the Pacific as well. So it's like reaching out to them. Uh, and that's why we thought mobilize, mobilization, this is my first time of actually knowing that we have uh, got uh, GOSH TV. Uh, I'm so excited to know that. And I'm really, um, you know, um, how I say it, proud of what you guys are doing. And I'm going to be announcing that in our next event, which is on the 28th of November, uh, where we'll be meeting with the 78, um, uh, will I say, the African and the diaspora uh, uh, community. Because as you well know, there's a, an organization called the ACP uh, organization in Brussels, where 
uh, where I worked uh, before. I wasn't working for ACP. I meant I went to school in Brussels. So that led me to know about the African Caribbean Pacific uh, group of countries. So uh, that gives us that uh, opportunity to have people from different African descent uh, countries. So in that event, I'll be announcing this particular um, uh, platform. And I hope to also, you know, increase that mobilization by announcing to friends who are into music. Um, uh, my area where I grew up in Lagos, uh, that's where um, Whiskey came from, that is Suleri. So most times we are looking at organizing events with Whiskey now because I had the lady talking about Davido. Well, Davido uh, grew up in another area, which is Ikeja, but I grew up in Suleri. So that's where Whiskey came from. So yeah, so we, we look forward um, working with you guys and I'm so excited to see what you guys are doing. It's so wonderful. And uh, yeah, basically mobilization is the key. And uh, uh, on the 28th of November, I hope uh, I'll be kind of inviting one of you guys to join and just hear what we're doing as well. Yes. And then uh, maybe after now, uh, we we'll kind of team up and we are writing to Whiskey. I don't know if the pandemic will be <laughs> allowing us how maybe that's gonna be visual, visual kind of music festival. Uh, like what is happening now with uh, Ra organization. They are doing a kind of visual uh, festival music. So yeah, I, I'm so excited to know you guys and I'm really looking forward to more of the mobilization right. and right. Sens sensitization. Uh, Much appreciated. We've got Dennis Brown as well. Dennis Brown, feel free to unmute and speak to the goddess Neef. Hey, excuse me. Hey Neef, how you doing? I'm doing well. How are you doing, Dennis? Doing great, doing great. I love what you're doing with the Blackest Truth, by the way. I think it's awesome. <laughs> uh, my question is, how do we, because um, what I find is what happens is um, we as a people, we create something and then in time, dare I say it, white people come along and take ownership of it. And it, and it gets to a point where white people are known for originating it when in fact they didn't we originated it but then history records it as they're the creators of it um i mean i suppose uh, if you bring it up to modern times you've got um rachel dozel or what's that professor professor um um, um i can't remember her name okay. i know you're talking about what's the, what's her name neef the, the 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 new girl the new one the new yeah, he, out, the, the oh, one he was passing for black for like 20 years something krug was out there was it yeah. what's her name, what's her name? Jessica, Jessica Krong. Jessica, Jessica, Jessica Krong, that's yeah, the Jessica one. Brown. Right. <laughs> you got Adele with the Bantu knots, and then, and then, and then I mean, I mean um, like I said, where I'm going with this is like, we create it, white people come along and appropriate it, and the next day they're the originators of it. So I guess my question is, how do we prevent that from happening? All right, I suppose white people are always going to be there, but how do, you, how do we take ownership of the culture so that it stays black, basically, is what I'm asking. Right. Um, this is something, this is actually essentially why I named myself me. Um, this conversation I'm about to have, or what I'm about to tell you, isn't something that we mm -hmm. like to discuss. However, it needs to be discussed. Um, there has to become a level of force that is adopted with Black anything. Mm -hmm. Like attached to Pan-Africanism has to be... Um, a principle with it that whatever is being built will be fought for essentially see because like right now and i mean we see it all the time you have black people who are gentrified and migrated and essentially are, are pulled and plucked from their place and sent somewhere else that's essentially because the people don't have the temperament the finances capital emotional stability to fight and sit there and say no what what i have right here will not be taken from me so because that's not an option for black people the only option is to leave or to give it to them so this is a, a key 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 you know when i name myself the goddess sneeth is because the goddess was the goddess of wisdom mm. hunting weaving but she was also the goddess of war right. see because in in anything anytime you're fighting for something or you're building something you have to have a level of war there to protect it 
And that's where that's always the part of the conversation we like to leave out. Oh, we don't want to talk about fighting. Oh, we don't want to talk about getting our hands dirty. Well, until we get our hands dirty, everything will be taken. Literally, everything will be taken. So, um, and it's, we can do this in small, subtle ways, you know, always encouraging uh, our children, ourselves to um, use our voice exercise our right of whatever we can do. Maybe our voice may, need, may not be the best power move at that point, but maybe legislation might be, uh, maybe unity might be, maybe finances and economy might be. Um, but what you're saying right here, brother, I think it's so important. It, it, it is attached in my opinion to a level of force or a level of um, resistance that we say, from this point forward, after 2025, because we got to recoup from 2020 right now. So let's just say we start in 2025. Yeah. <laughs> after 2025, <laughs> anything that we build and you all take, something will be taken from you. Mm. That and that's what I feel like it has to be <clears throat> because that's we've done everything else but that. Yeah, I hear. I hear. And, and when we have done that, in my opinion, we we've, we've seen we've gotten better results. The results may not be perfect. However, they're better when we have said, you know, and it's just like anybody, if somebody tried to take your purse, somebody tried to take your wallet, what are you going to do? Like, are you just going to give the purse, your, the person, your wallet, even if they do succeed, you're still going to show some form of resistance. Yeah. Yeah. For real. All right, Anise. Thank you very much. Yes, brother. Thank you. It was nice meeting you. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm praying it as well like this year. You see, Shadow was like got Kush TV and well even if I even even more more applicable is is like the blackest truth here because you're dealing with so much current events and responses to things that are happening right now in the social space. What it is is that a lot this social media they say that it democratizes um media, but it really don't because all of us are responding to what the mainstream put out. So it's like we're 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 all magnifying and in increasing in the frequency of their thing and their message and their institutions. Yeah. And I feel like it's more of more of the blackest truth that's needed in the sense of the fact that just different people that are gonna talk about other things. You know what I'm saying? And magnify other and increase the frequency of other things to popularize those things in it. You know what I'm saying? So like, you know, when the when when whatever revolutionary artist puts out the mixtape and whatever, do a review. You know, you know what I'm saying? Like, let's talk about that because there's gonna whenever I mention mean, like when if Drake drops a, a single tomorrow, there's gonna be a million channels across YouTube that are gonna do a rev, a, a reaction and a review video right. to that song. You know what I'm saying? And that's that that help, and they know that they the the. the these record companies, they're gonna factor that into their marketing budget. Just, just what I'm saying, or whatever else like that. They they factor in these statistics in. So I feel like it's that kind of thing. Like, what are we, what are we pushing, and what are we promoting from our platforms that is just happening every day, grassroots in our community? Just what I'm saying, or what, what do, who do we want to see as like the biggest artists coming from this grassroots thing that we're building? Like, who's that guy or Uman? You know what I'm saying? That's that's the thing for me, isn't it? I, I look like, oh, I thought yeah, I was gonna say something. Sorry, but yeah, you know, what I'm I love yeah. that idea. Uh, if y'all know any Pan African artists that outside of the, you know the Ciroc, the MCs, the out here in the states we have Rhapsody. You know, yeah. we have some some women that are doing their thing and some men. If y'all know any Pan Africanist grassroots artists, I love that review Pan African artists because when that yeah. WAP video came out, I was the first one. <laughs> <laughs> The first one to do the video. Hey, <laughs> I had both of them on there. <laughs> That's the soft reminder. I appreciate that. <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah, something that that brother said for the ACP, though, the African Caribbean Pacific, he said, uh, which was being hosted on November 28th. Um, those different, those different like orgs that was a, a part of how I came into a lot of the knowledge that I have prior to one of those organizations I had the straightest hair relaxer every six to eight weeks um I was your traditional black American woman and those organ that organization in in particular uh African Students Association really really defined who I was and and, and gave me an introduction into uh mm -hmm. the continent so those orgs, no matter how how immense, they really do play a big goal and they 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 make a big difference. Um, and I learned a lot. I'm forever grateful for that. So um, 
I encourage you, brother, to keep going in that and and definitely recruiting. I'm always about recruiting. Let's get some more people up in here because people are bound to drop out of the org. So you need to recruit. Definitely, definitely, definitely. Any, we we got a few more minutes with the goddess Neve. So anybody who wants to interact with her, please feel free to raise your hand uh, and do so now. What you what have you got coming up, Neve? I have currently, I have a lot of collaborations that I'm wanting to do. So be on the lookout for that. Um, something, obviously we do have TBT game. We are looking to do a giveaway very soon. So like the next 25 people that join the Blackest Truth game, we're gonna have a giveaway. Um, but right now everyone is kind of like in this virtual reality mode. So I'm really loving it, how we're all meeting up in our own worlds. Yeah. So um, if y'all want to meet in my world, definitely come to the Black History. <laughs> <laughs> That's where we're at. Yeah, man. Nah, we appreciate it. Right, Last Charts, Kings and Queens. If you want to interact with the Blackest Truth, the Goddess Neve, check out her channel. Do you know what I'm saying? She's gone viral a couple of times recently uh, for different things. Has the what video gone viral yet? Not yet. <laughs> they, they wasn't feeling that because I <laughs> they wasn't feeling that one. I don't I think can, I can I can imagine. <laughs> <laughs> but it happens, it's the nature of the game. It is, it is, it is. <laughs> speak speak on that for a sec though, sis, because this has been hotly debated. People are seeing it as the, the epitome of women's empowerment. Uh, you know what I'm saying? And, and, and these things like what what's what's your what's your, give the people them a snapshot into your team? No, you know, it's exactly what you just said about the artists. When you don't, you're you're not the promoter. You're not, a lot of these video shoots, if you go to the director, mm. the producer, the cameraman, the, the, the videographer, the colorist, mm. these are all white people. Mm. No, the only people that are black is the artists and the dancers. Mm. So um, I'll say this, WAP is not the worst video. You had songs in the 60s and 70s that was just saying the same thing, just mm -hmm. putting it more subtle. Mm -hmm. um swv i think would give cardi b and <laughs> uh and maybe it's the end about little kim like there was a whole little kim era i was like has no one heard little kim or lady saw like lady saw <laughs> <laughs> thank you did, did they not look sis did they not see the whole magazine cover i mean the cd album cover where little kim was right in that position so um i look at it it's like what you said brother the platform is not anyone that is <laughs> it's white folks controlling it you know um and and that's how i'll say it it is even even now to this day the music is is being projected and, and advertised by people who want the degraded mindset of black women and mm -hmm. essentially anything that's precious in the world is um is covered you know diamonds uh some of your caves some of your most immense gems you gotta dig deep to find those things so everyone's um assets just being out there you know the black woman being seen as the new hoe and being a hoe being normal all of that to me is just typical sambo black women on on the front line being sold as slaves oh this one she got a big booty this one got a big derriere she'll go for 15 cents you know how much are you willing to buy for this one you know she'll give you what you want this same puppet master is what I essentially is saying. Mm -hmm. What well, somebody in chat saying, please go this. Can you send send can you send your website? Yes, the blackest truth.com. That I actually type it now, the blackest truth.com. And I appreciate y'all. I look forward to the day meeting y'all all y'all in person. And then we all chilling. Oh, sorry, sis. You said you said it to me privately. I'm I'm oh. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna share it again now. <laughs> <From there. laughs> <My laughs> I sent it private. Yeah. Oh, okay, I need to send it to everyone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The blackesttruth.com. I appreciate y'all, everyone who tuned in today. Yes, and I appreciate right. the opportunity. Much appreciated to the blackest truth. Make sure you subscribe to the Teen Kings and Queens, the goddess Neef at the blackest truth on YouTube. And look out for more collaborations between Got Kush TV and the blackest truth coming very, very soon, Kings and Queens. Yesterday. Okay.